Hi, I'm Dan Parks with Cruise Tools. We make tools and tool kits for musicians. And what I'd like to do is share with you the basic setup process for a guitar. It's really not a difficult process, although it may seem like a terrifying prospect to some guitar players. But if you have a little bit of knowledge and the right tools, it's something that you can and should do to keep your guitar in top playing shape. Setup is not a one-time process, so chances are that setup you had done at the music store about three quarters of the year a year ago is no longer valid. That's because a guitar, since it's made of wood, it's really going to be subject to changes in temperature, humidity, handling, even changes in string gauge. So it really is something that is an ongoing process. Once you get, become comfortable with basic setup, you may find you pick up the guitar just before going on stage. Something seems a little bit wrong. You get out the, a few tools, do a quick measurement, and find out that you're going to want to do just a real small tweak on the truss rod, for example, before going on stage, and then be able to have your best possible performance. Now, I should mention that if your guitar has major problems, then that's going to be outside the scope of this tutorial, and you really should leave major work to a qualified technician. Also, if um, you're just simply uncomfortable with using tools or the process I'm going to describe, then maybe you should just leave it to somebody else. Okay, in order to get started, uh, there's a few things you're going to need. First of all, you, it's going to be important to have a good, clean, well-lit location to do it. Your kitchen table is going to be just fine. Also, you need a safe surface to set the guitar on. Now, I'm using here a, um, a mat available from Fender. It's an aftermarket mat, but you really can just use a nice soft bath towel, set a few books underneath it to raise the neck up, and then you're going to be set. And of course you're going to need some tools. Uh, one of the most common tools used on a guitar is a hex key. It's often referred to as an Allen wrench. Um, I prefer the L-shaped wrench just because it gives you a lot of flexibility. Sometimes the short end is going to be a little easier to uh, use because you're going to get extra leverage. Maybe for access reasons, you may want to use the longer side for other applications. Um, now, if you're looking at size for a truss rod, it's very useful to have a ball-in tip. And that's because a lot of truss rod nuts don't actually give you direct access to the nut. You actually have to get at it from an angle. And a ball-in allows you to, to do that. One other note on Allen keys is that if you have several guitars, then um, you maybe you've got a U.S. guitar and then an offshore produced guitar. Therefore, you're going to need both metric and inch-based Allen keys. And that can add up to quite a few keys. What we've got here is 11 different sizes. So what we've done is we've color-coded gold for metric and black for inch, and it just allows you to get to the correct key a little more quickly. Other things that you're going to need tool-wise, first of all, a screwdriver is going to be very important. Um, number two, number one Phillips uh, tips are going to be very common. If you've got a vintage style bridge, then you may need a very small uh, slotted tip. This is three millimeters, which is roughly equivalent to one eighth inch. And then some guitars are also going to need a larger slot. In fact, for a vintage style truss rod nut, the base of the neck, um, this is the actual tool you're going to require. One other note on the screwdriver is uh, some Truss rod nuts, uh, noteworthy, most noteworthy is Gibson, actually don't use an Allen key for adjustment. They require a small socket. So you need something like a nut driver, and this screwdriver fills the bill. It's got a 3 16 inch nut driver on one end that would be used for um, a Gibson, and then also on the other side it's got quarter inch work for some other guitar makes that require a nut driver. A few other things you're going to need on the measurement side, an automotive style thickness gauge. And then a good quality ruler, just a six inch steel ruler, as long as it's precise, is going to work just fine. And then finally, a capo. And I'll explain in a little bit why you're going to need a capo. Now all these tools I just showed you, as well as a few other things, a LED flashlight, a diagonal cutters, string winder, and an easy setup guide, are all contained in the Cruise Tools Groove Tech Toolkit. But you're welcome to just put together your own toolkit as well. Your guitar may require a special tool. Here's an example of a special